All right, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about how to take the integral of a product. If we look at these, we've got three integrals on the screen right now, and we already know how to take two of them. Okay, so I just want to remind you the one on the far left, this is something that we learned about kind of at the very beginning, that we could hit with algebra before anti-differentiating. So I'll just show you real quick what that would look like. So if I had distributed the x to the 6 and the negative x squared, I was taking the integral of 6x minus x to the third, and then all of a sudden it became much easier. I could find an antiderivative, plug in the top and bottom, and subtract. Okay. The one in the middle, this one is the product of a composition of functions and something else. And specifically, that something else is proportional to the derivative of the inside of the composition of functions. That's the u du pattern. So we could, you know, anti-differentiate this using a u substitution. Using u equals x squared, then, you know, you take the derivative, you get du, it's 2x dx, but I don't have 2x dx, I just have x dx, so I solve for x dx, and that end up being half of du, substitute it on half of du, and end up taking the antiderivative of one half cosine u with respect to u, and that's something that we were able to do. Okay, we already did this. If you need a refresher on that, that's back in the uh, sixth unit. But this thing right here, this x times cosine x, this isn't the product of a composition of functions, so I'm not going to be able to use u du. Um, it's not something I can do anything with algebraically. This one is going to need a product rule. So we're going to have to just sit for a second and develop a product rule for anti-differentiation. So to do that, we're going to start with the product rule for derivatives. Then we're going to take the antiderivative of both sides of this equation. And then realize that if I had tried to anti-differentiate one more time to get an antiderivative for f of x times g of x with respect to x, just in general in terms of f and g, that it was going to involve a second order antiderivative, you know, stuff we just don't do in this class. And so what we're going to do instead is we're going to solve for this one, for this integral right here. And this is okay, because this means that if we have the product of two things in our integrand, and we can recognize one of them as the derivative of something else, that's that g prime of x, if we can anti-differentiate one of the factors, we've got a good chance to be able to anti-differentiate the product. Okay? And so we're also going to need to kind of translate this into something that we can kind of more easily remember than that last equation right there, because that would be too much, right? So I'm just going to say, let u equal f of x and dv equal g prime of x dx. I would take the derivative of u with respect to x, and I would get du dx equals f prime of x, or du is equal to f prime of x dx. And I could anti-differentiate both sides of this equation in green on the right and say that v is equal to g of x. And then when I go to kind of translate this, okay, this is u, this was dv, this is u, that's v, G is V, and F prime of X dx is DU. So we can translate this into something that we can more easily remember, and that's the integral of U dV is equal to U times V minus the integral of V DU. Okay? And this is the formula for integration by parts. And this is a formula that we just have to know at a moment's notice in Cal BC. Just have to know it. But the good news is that, you know, these integrals require a whole lot less creativity than the UDU integrals. And so let me just show you how that worked. So I'm going to go back to that x cosine x antiderivative that we weren't able to take just a couple of minutes ago. And I'm going to say, okay, well, I've got two factors here. But the thing is, I know how to take the antiderivative of both of them. So for now, I'm going to tell you, we want u equals x and dv equals cosine x dx. Okay. This means that I'm going to, well, it's going to go the same way every time. I need to take the derivative on the left, so du dx equals 1. And I'm going to anti-differentiate both sides of the one on the right. And uh, you will see me write this step really after this time, but um, this is what I'm doing. And then I'm going to say du equals dx, and v equals antiderivative for sine x with respect to x would, or for cosine x would be sine x. And I'll leave the plus c till the very end, because I know this is an antiderivative problem. It's going to have a plus c at the very end, uh, and I don't need to put one in when I'm just finding v. Okay? And then, you know, if you tasked with memorizing something, the best ways to do it would just be to write it down a whole bunch of times. So I would suggest that each time you do this, you write down that the integral of u dv equals u times v minus the integral of v du. Okay, that'll help. 
And now I can just go right back to my, my kind of structure here with u and dv. And I'm going to say, okay, well, I am taking the integral of u dv x times cosine x dx. That's the integral of u dv. So this is going to equal u times v. That's x times sine x minus the integral of v du. So v was sine x and du was dx. And so when you, you know, observe the UDV structure, you're not actually changing variables to use in Vs. You're just using the structure of the result of the integral of UDV to set up your integral in Xs or Ts or whatever your independent variable is. So we can do this. This is going to be okay, x sine x. An antiderivative for sine of x with respect to x is negative cosine x. So if I'm subtracting negative cosine, I'd have like a plus a cosine x right here. And then I would add in the plus c. But at this point, it would probably be a good idea for us to, you know, kind of just check our work here. Let's take the derivative of this and see what comes back. Hopefully I get back x times cosine x, right? And that would let me know that this technique does work. Okay, so I'm going to take the derivative using the product rule here. I'm going to take the derivative of x first and leave sine x the same. And I'm going to leave x the same and take the derivative of sine x with respect to x. Then I'm going to go over here and take the derivative of cosine x with respect to x. That's negative sine x. And well, for good measure, might as well take the derivative of the plus c because that's going to be 0. And then I see, oh, there it is, sine x and negative sine x. And that's going to be x cosine x. So this technique does work. Now, at this point, the natural question is kind of like, wait a second, how did you know to take u equals x and dv equals cosine x dx? Okay. And you need to be careful about that, because if you make the wrong choice of u and dv, you can end up making your integral more complicated, not simpler. And that's the whole idea with, with integration by parts, or really any of these techniques of integration, is make your integration simpler. Okay. And so we just need to have kind of a taxonomy for choosing u and choosing dv. Okay. So I'm just going to tell you it's I late, and here's what they stand for. Okay, so it goes inverse trig, log, algebra, regular trig, and exponential. And up at the top, these are best as u, and at the bottom, those are best as dv. So, you know, in the example earlier, I had x times cosine x, algebra times trig. And I will mention that by algebra, I mean like powers of x, something like y equals x squared, y equals the third root of x, or y equals 1 over x to the fourth, you know, something like that. These are algebraic. Okay, and so I had x, which was algebraic, and I had cosine x, which was trig. Since algebra comes before trig, I let u equal x. Okay? But had it been x times the log of x, I would have wanted u equals natural log x and dv equals x, dx. Okay? And uh, I feel like there was something else I had to say about this. Um, you know, we won't deal a whole lot with, you know, integration by parts using inverse trig in this class, but it can be done in ways that and you'll see it on the homework. It'll be not but um, that's how we're going to choose u and dv. Right now, I need to show you something else that can happen when we do integration by parts. And so we're going to do the example antiderivative of t squared e to the t dt. Okay? So I late. I've got algebra, which is t squared, and exponential is e to the t. So since algebra comes before exponential, I'm going to let u equal e, uh, t squared. So u equals t squared, and dv equals e to the t dt. We like dv to be something that we can easily take the antiderivative of. Now, it's not always just as simple as that, but that is mostly it, is that dv wants to be something that I can take the antiderivative of without too much difficulty, while also making my integrand simpler. So I'm going to take du and get v. Antiderivative for e to the t with respect to t is just going to be e to the t. Okay, I need to remind myself that the integral of u dv equals u times v minus the integral of v du. Okay. And so we're going to kind of fit into that structure. It's equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. Now v du will be e to the t times 2t dt. So I might write it like that. It's like, well, the other one now is just taking the antiderivative of sine 
T or sine X or whatever, and it, it worked out really well, right? Because I knew how to take that antiderivative. But this one right here, I don't know what to do with this 2T E of the T. It is a, it's a pretty, you know, kind of flat product. It's not going to be U to U. I'm going to have to use U D V a second time. So I'm going to say, all right. I'm going to just focus in on this integral, and I'm going to go right say, all right. I'm going to let I late algebra before exponential. Okay, dv is going to be e to the t dt, so that du is 2 dt, and v equals e to the t again. Okay. And then this thing that you know I'm going to eventually be subtracting, I'm just going to do that integral right now. That integral is going to be u times v. minus the antiderivative of v du. Well, v du will be e to the t times 2 times dt, so maybe I write it like this. And all of a sudden, this, this is an integral I can do. Now, I am taking t squared e to the t minus that still. So I'm going to keep doing that, t squared e to the t. Okay, I'll still have this 2t e to the t. And an antiderivative for 2e to the t with respect to t, that's going to be 2e to the t. And I can just, you know, you can just leave that in the square brackets right there. I'm subtracting the whole thing. And you don't forget to add your plus c because this is an antiderivative problem. And that's, that's really how it goes when, when we have to do in, in integration by parts with two iterations. For AP calculus, I have not seen one where you have to do more than two. If you did have to do it, there's something called a kind of a table method that, you know, if you're interested, I'll show you later on in the course, but that's just going to distract us from our overall goal of integrating products, right? This isn't just integration by parts. We need to be able to recognize when to hit things with algebra, when to do use, use substitution, and then when to do integration by parts. Okay. Since integration by parts is the new thing to you, that's why I'm focusing on that in this video. But for the homework, you'll see that there's a lot of UDU and a lot of just, you know, algebra before anti-differentiation. Now, the last thing I need to make you aware of, of what to do, is well, what should you do if you run into a definite integral, right? I've only told you about the anti-differentiation step. So I'll just tell you really what this did was it helped us find an antiderivative, and we know kind of the relationship between the antiderivative and the definite integral. You know, we would just kind of plug in top and bottom and subtract. So the integral from A to B of U dV is going to be still UV minus the integral of V dU, except UV is something we're going to need to integrate between or evaluate between A and B it's equals to minus the integral from A to B of V dU. So it really doesn't change. We just need to make sure to evaluate the antiderivative at the top and the bottom and subtract just like normal. We know the fundamental theorem of calculus. So let's do one of these examples. So the example I want to do with you is one that's just actually pretty common in the, you know, AP exam questions. I've seen a few different versions of this item. You know, they give you a table of values of f and its derivative or f and its first couple derivatives, and they ask you about something like this. And we've seen ones where they ask about x times f double prime of x squared, where we had to do u substitution, but we haven't seen this yet. This one's actually, you know, I think a really fair way to ask an integration by parts question. So I'm going to let u equal x and dv equal f double prime of x. And I know this doesn't fit into our kind of ilate taxonomy, but if you think about it, dv is the one you take the antiderivative of, and u is the one you take the derivative of. And if I let u equal f double prime of x, then du would be f triple prime of x dx. And there isn't even anything in this table that has to do with f double prime, so I don't know what I would be thinking I was going to do with f triple prime. It doesn't look promising. So I'm going to let dv be f double prime of x dx when I anti-differentiate it. I get v equals f prime of x, and well, that's something I can work with in my table. Okay, over here, I'll see that du is going to be equal to dx. Okay. Now, y'all just learned, so you probably need to be reminded, that the integral from 1 to 3 of u dv is going to equal u times v, evaluated from 1 to 3, minus the integral from 1 to 3 of v du. So I'm just going to fit all that stuff in, and I'm going to say all right. This is going to equal u times v. As x runs from 1 to 3, minus the integral from 1 to 3 of v du. Okay. And it's like, okay, this is something I'm going to be able to work with. I'm going to say that this is 3 times f prime of 3, 
minus 1 times f prime of 1. And then to evaluate that integral, I'm going to find an antiderivative. I'm going to plug in 3 and 1, and I'm going to subtract. And that'll leave me with, okay, 3 times f prime of 3 minus, oh, minus f prime of 1 minus, and then over here I'm going to have f of 3 minus f of 1 is 5 minus 2. And so in total, this is looking to me like negative 12. Okay. And that's how we would compute a definite integral using integration by parts. And, you know, I've got a few more examples, but I think I'm going to record those as a separate video And because this is really what we need to know. We need to be able to integrate products by using u substitution, right? And which is the middle integral that I did in red. Okay, we need to be able to use u substitution. We need to be able to use algebra. We need to be able to simplify our integrand before anti-differentiating. And then we also need to be able to use integration by parts. These in tandem will allow us to integrate all of the products that we need for AP calculus. So thanks for watching.